the Chicago skyline bled fiery orange as David, the Grandview Hotel's night doorman, stepped out for his break. A crisp autumn breeze whipped around him, carrying the scent of roasted chestnuts and freshly brewed coffee. Across the bustling Michigan Avenue, a familiar figure sat nestled in the corner booth of the grind, a cozy cafe bathed in the warm glow of fairy lights. Sarah, her emerald eyes sparkling beneath a cascade of auburn curls, became a daily highlight for David in the monotony of opening doors and greeting guests. Mustering his courage, David crossed the street, a nervous tremor in his hands. He approached her table, the clinking of coffee cups and the murmur of conversation the soundtrack to his unfolding story. Hi, he stammered, a touch out of breath. I'm David. Can I sit? Sarah, halfway through stirring her cappuccino, offered a hesitant smile. Sure, I'm Sarah. An awkward silence hung between them before David, emboldened by the steam swirling from his own cup, blurted out, I see you here every day. What brings you to the grind? Sarah's smile shifted, a hint of sadness clouding her features. My stepfather, she replied, her voice tinged with annoyance. He's a guest at the Grand View. We haven't seen eye to eye in years, and his visit here is... She trailed off, searching for the right word, unsettling. David, sensing her discomfort, leaned forward. I'm all ears if you want to talk. Sarah hesitated, then with a quick glance around the cafe, began to unravel her story. He refuses to return my sketchbooks, she confessed, her voice barely above a whisper. They're filled with years of work, my dreams and aspirations. And he insists I return to Seattle with him after his stay. David's brow furrowed. Seattle? You don't want to go back? Sarah shook her head vehemently. Seattle suffocates me. My art. My life, it all breeds here in Chicago. A warmth bloomed in David's chest, a mix of empathy and an admiration for Sarah's passion. Those sketchbooks must be important to you then. Her eyes welled up, threatening to spill over. They mean everything. They're a part of me. The weight of her words settled on David. He saw a kindred spirit in Sarah, someone passionate about their craft, someone fighting for a dream. An impulsive plan began to take shape in his mind. Maybe I can help you get them back, he offered, his voice firm despite the butterflies fluttering in his stomach. Sarah's eyes widened in surprise. You? But how? David lowered his voice further, a conspiratorial glint in his eyes. I know the layout of the Grand View like the back of my hand. With a little planning, I could slip into your stepfather's room and retrieve them. It would be a quick in and out operation. Sarah considered this for a moment, then shook her head. It's too risky. You could get caught. 
There's always a risk, David persisted. But I can't stand by and see you lose something so important. Sarah's gaze held his, searching for some hidden motive, some ulterior agenda. But all she saw was genuine concern and a spark of determination. A small smile played on her lips. Okay, David. But if this explodes in our faces, I'm blaming you for coffee dates for a month. David chuckled, relief washing over him. Deal. But only if you promise to let me take you out for a real date afterward, away from stolen sketchbooks and disgruntled stepfathers. Sarah laughed, a light, musical sound that chased away the shadows from her eyes. We'll see about that, Mr. Knight in shining armor. Over the next two days, their late night rendezvous at the grind became a clandestine planning session. Sarah sketched a detailed layout of her stepfather's room memorizing the location of the safe deposit box where he likely kept the sketchbooks. David, armed with this information, meticulously planned his route, pinpointing blind spots in the hotel's security system. However, Sarah hadn't revealed the full story. Unbeknownst to David, she had already made a call, her voice laced with desperation. Don't worry, Uncle Michael, she'd assured the voice at the other end. I'll have them for you tomorrow afternoon. The day of the operation arrived, a cold drizzle replacing the crisp autumn breeze. David, his heart pounding against his ribs, waited for Sarah's stepfather to leave his room for his afternoon meeting. As soon as the coast was clear, David, disguised in a discarded housekeeping uniform, he